So I'm really, really very excited about this. I was just hooking up this solenoid valve, and I thought about you guys because I was hooking it up backwards. Now, I remember last week when we were actually in the lab, for those of you who were in my lab, we were discussing all of the stuff on the pneumatic board, and we were looking at the actual valves that were on there, the limit valves and also the DCVs. And remember the DCVs that had those holes in them? We were talking about exhaust. Those were the exhaust ports. The other thing that I said to you was I said, well, there's a question. I said, hey, these limit valves, there are two ports on the limit valve. Is it like, is there polarity on them? What, what do we do with them, right? And I said, are there actually two ports or three ports? And we had come to the conclusion that there are three ports. And the third port was the exhaust port. It was actually on the back and we didn't have access to it. So it's not regular that we actually hook up stuff to an exhaust port. In industrial pneumatics, usually exhaust port, we might put a muffler on the exhaust port and uh, we might just kind of just let it vent into air. But generally we don't hook up stuff that we're going to control to the exhaust port. And we certainly don't put air into the exhaust port. You don't hook up a valve that way. Well, I did mention that sometimes I'd like to get a little funky and just use these valves a little backwards. I said, you don't always have to use them this way. Industrial pneumatics, we use them this way generally, but sometimes it's good to think outside the box. And that's kind of what I was doing with this. And I have this cool example that I'm going to show you that I kind of put on the board. But first I want to talk to you about the valve and um, kind of show it to you and show you what I did with it and how the way I kind of hooked it up. So let's take a look at this. Okay, so here we go. We got a cool little solenoid valve, a pneumatic solenoid valve, and we got three ports on the valve. Now, there's the pressure port, and there's the output port, port A, and down here is the exhaust port, so A exhaust, which makes sense. Now, it looked like I got hooked up. What did I do? Oh, what's it? Oh, what's that? I put a plug in the the part the port where you usually put pressure into. Aren't you supposed to like put pressure in there? So, no, look, I'll show you the plug. Okay, this is a plug here, okay? So that's an MPT fitting, okay? And it's actually brass. And there's a reason why it's brass, and I want you to look that up and get back to me on that. Why do they make fittings, NPT fittings, national pipe thread, we went over that, in brass? Like, what's up with that? Anyway, so that's a plug, and that's a hex. So that goes in there, and essentially what I've done was I've completely plugged off the air that goes in there. And I want to show you how I've hooked this up backwards and why. But first of all, hey, take a look at that schematic. Is, it, is that right? Is, it, is that wrong? Because we don't draw it like that. It must be wrong, right? No, they can draw it any way they want. Clipper, that's the company there and they make these little valves. They can do anything they want. That's how they draw that. And you'll find other manufacturers will also draw it that way. Our software that we use actually draws a little bit differently, but that's okay. I drew it on the board like they have it here. So let's go take a look at what I got on the board. I'll put the valve down over here. So essentially, what's going on over here, right, is I have a diagnostic station for one of my controllers. So this controller has this little pump in it. It's a diaphragm pump actually, and you know we'll talk about that later. Diaphragm pumps are pretty cool. What I wanna do is, I wanna put this through its paces. Essentially, I wanna control uh, a pneumatic cylinder that simulates as close as I can the contraction of a human muscle. So let's take, actually let's take a look at the human muscle. So over here we have a pneumatic cylinder, okay, and the pneumatic cylinder, I'm going to put air in here and it's going to go this way, the, the rod's going to go this way. I have a weight on top of there, just to actually bring it back down again when the cycle's done, but I don't really need the weight there. I may actually not even include it. So let's continue with this. So the cylinder goes up, if I were to block the air in there, right, the air that's inside here would compress, and that's going to simulate the actual muscle getting stronger and stronger, the, the actual contracture getting getting producing more force as you push say an arm that's contracted if you push that arm right that arm is going to push back further and further and more and more as you push it so I'm trying to emulate that the best I can now I also want to adjust it so I got a little cool with the adjustments and I added something called an accumulator which we talked about remember I flipped the board over and I said what's this cylinder back here well, it doesn't have a rod on it what's that right that was a accumulator essentially it's just a little pressure vessel so there's a symbol for an accumulator on the board. Let's take a look. Okay, that's an accumulator, and then we have this funky kind of thing going on here, and that's that non-return valve, right? So it's a throttle valve, but it's a non-return throttle valve, and that's just for metering. So I got one of those. I put it in here. I want to be able to adjust the air that's coming out of there. So it kind of adds a little bit of back pressure and stuff. Kind of want to fool around with it, so I'll put that in there. If I don't really need it, I'll just open it wide up. Um, and then here we go. 
This is the accumulator. Now, I actually have got a really cool accumulator where the top comes off. And what that allows me to do is actually change the volume of the accumulator by adding stuff. Right? So I'm going to play around with this and see how it goes. Again, I want to best emulate the human muscle in contraction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually change the volume of this accumulator by adding a liquid. And I'm going to add like an oil because if I added a water, if I added a water, if I added water, thank you very much, then the vapor of the water is going to get into my pneumatic system, it's going to get into my valve, it's going to get into my hoses, and it's going to get back into my controller. I don't want to have to happen. So I'm actually going to do two things possibly. One is use an oil, or the other is I'm just going to stick stuff in there. I can fill it with rocks if I wanted to. But I think maybe I'll go with like a little bits of aluminum rod. Once I get the right volume, I'm actually going to put aluminum rod in there and just leave it in there. Maybe stainless steel rod. I, I don't want to do it. But it's just something that takes up the space inside that's going to change the volume. So with all that said and done, how do we control all this and what's the valve for? Good question. Okay, so what I want to do is this PLC, Programmable Logic Controller, is essentially controlling the whole process. There are lots of other buttons and switches and sensors and things that go on to make things happen. Um, and specifically sensors, actually, because I want to get all the data out of what's going on here. But anyway, the PLC is doing, in this case, two things. One is it's energizing the solenoid right in the valve that's one thing energizing and de-energizing that solenoid and the other is that it's getting the information from this guy okay so essentially that's your pressure information coming in and it's a transducer pressure transducer is taking the pressure that it's measuring coming out of this hose and it's taking that information and it's throwing it into the input card analog input card so it it'll know the volume coming in the volume of <laughs> the volume of the voltage, thank you very much. So it knows the voltage coming in, the level of voltage, and then it can essentially figure out what the pressure is. I want to do two things with this. One is I want to run it through its paces so it's driving this pneumatic muscle over and over and over again for about five hours. I really want to push this medical controller. So actually, that's just the kind of the basic box there. The only thing that's really important about this is that it does send out pressurized air. So the two things are, one is I want to send it through its paces, but beforehand I want to test the full load pressure. I want to see how much pressure the little diaphragm pump that's in here puts out at the beginning of the test. I pull it right off the shelf, right off of the manufacturing table, it goes in, boom, and it goes to this test rig here. So what's going to happen here is that I have to block the air, okay? So what I really need to do is I need to be able to do this, block the air completely so no air can leave that hose, and the pressure will build up immediately right away. My pressure transducer is going to get that information. It'll run like that for about 10, 15 seconds, just so I can get like a reading of the full load pressure. And then I want it to go through its paces. So it'll run this thing for a whole long time. It'll get tired. And then after that, I'm going to block it again and then take another, a second pressure test. Now, diaphragm pumps are interesting. They get a little tired after you use them, especially for a really long time. I'm interested to know how tired this gets. Now, my design problem is, how do I do that? How do I block it and unblock it? Well, here's a valve, right? Okay, look at this valve. Let's see how I'm hooking it up. Regularly, you would take a valve like this, and you would take your pressure source, and you would dial it into there. Yeah, pretty standard. Goes into pressure of the valve. And then outside A, you would take that, and then maybe you would put it into whatever you're driving. Generally, that's how you would hook that up. Industry will hook it up back that way. And over here, you're going to put your exhaust valve. And that's how it works. But that's not how I have it hooked up. Let's see what I've done with it. What I need it to do, as you can see right now, it is a normally non-passing valve or a normally closed valve. right? What I need it to do is, in its normal state, right? I need it to pass air through it. If I don't do anything to it, but just leave it alone, air goes through it. When I energize it, it needs to block the air. Just say, no, no, here you go. So, well, I don't need this one anymore. So, what I'm going to do here is show you how I hooked it up. I'm taking the output from my pump, and I'm going into the valve backwards. I'm putting it into the output. And then from here, it's supposed to hooking an exhaust or a muffler up to my exhaust or just leaving it open, I'm taking the air out of the exhaust and I'm buzzing it into here. 
Now, if I don't touch it, as you can see, air is going to go right through it. Now, the other thing is, I put a T here, and you saw it. You saw that little plug there? So actually, that's, I'm going to put a T there to simulate the plug. So now, what's going to happen is that if I don't energize it, the whole system works just fine. This guy can drive the muscle as long as it wants. At the beginning and at the end of the cycle, the PLC is going to energize the solenoid. I've drawn that for you there. That's how you draw the solenoid energizing, but you guys know that from last semester. 24 volts here. Energize the solenoid. Solenoid energizes. The valve changes configuration. This configuration goes over there, and as you can see, the air from here is then going to go to there. See? Right? Now, the symbols are a little backwards, and that's okay. It doesn't specifically mean that the air has to go this way. It just generally it does, so that's how they draw it. But we're not using it in the general. We're using it in the funky. Right? So, right now, if the solenoid's energized, the air is going to come down here and it's going to see this. It's going to get blocked. So while this little test is going on for about 15, 20 seconds, I'm going to energize the solenoid, block the air. This guy is going to have full load pressure. My pressure transducer is going to get that information and it's going to record it. And then about 15, maybe, well, maybe for 20 seconds, it doesn't take long. All I really need to know is the, the full load pressure immediately at the beginning and then after the test. During the test, I just de-energize the solenoid, the valve goes back to normal because of the spring, right? And the whole system runs. And what this is going to do is actually it's going to get this muscle to go back and forth and back and forth. And in the meantime, this pressure transducer is actually going to record all of that pressure information. So I think we kind of went over that and hopefully you found something interesting about that. And uh, that's about it. Thanks for, thanks for watching.